Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 contains so many features that Apple didn't announce in their keynote or even on their web page. So I thought I'd go over even more new features and changes. Now, the first thing is on the lock screen. One thing I didn't mention in the initial what's new video is there's actually an animation when you unlock it, the font actually changes from whatever you had it set to, to sort of a different thickness and then back as you lock it. So as you can see it there, it changes thickness based on the overall thickness that you have set in the customization. Apple added live animations, not only to iPad that they showed in the keynote, but also to iPhone. However, this seems to not work properly as I lock and unlock the phone. It doesn't seem to animate like it should. So again, if we go to maybe another wallpaper here, these should actually animate as you unlock. Now this will probably be updated in the future. So it works properly. But if we go and add one, you'll see, we have an option for live photos at the top, or we can go to our albums. And we also have an option for live photos that should animate as well. And you'll see, I can set this one. This is from a photo that I took a long time ago and you'll see it should animate, but again, it doesn't seem to work properly. And then you have the option to go in your photo library and more. But other than that, it should work as expected in the future. Some people have already seen this working. I've not been able to get it to work properly. So again, if we set it, you'll see there's a little bit of flicker. Let's unlock here and it should animate in general, but there's a lot of animated wallpapers and live wallpapers should work in the future. Also, when someone's playing music on the lock screen, they're showing a new icon for HomePod. So you'll see it just went to sleep there, but it should show a new icon. Some are seeing this in a single sort of live activity style widget. If we swipe over a couple screens, you'll see, I have a contact widget. If I press and hold on the widget and then edit it, you can see that it says contact and also has an option to show buttons. Then you can specify where you actually want the message to go to. So if I select one here, you'll see now, once we go back to the main widget, it now has an option to message and then call that are interactive. Also, if we move this around, maybe we want to move this widget over here and then hit done. If we shake the phone, we now have the option to undo the widget move and it will move back. So a couple new little updates for widgets, iOS 17 brings some great camera updates. And while it may not change the overall processing, there's some great options. Now, if we go into the camera and then I hold it upright on a scene, Let's see if this works. There's actually a level here and I don't know if you can see this. It shows up sometimes and it shows out of level. Let me take a screenshot so you can see what I'm showing you. There we go. And you can see that there's a level built in. There's also an option for this as well. If we go into our settings, go down to camera, and then we scroll down, we have an option for the level. So it's great that it's built in. It's very simple and something that I've wanted for a really long time. Also, if you use your phone to record video, this is a great option as well. You can now lock the white balance within the video. So if you turn that on and maybe we go over and take a video, this is something that I often use and I want the white balance to be locked. So you could tap on the screen here, press and hold. Of course you can lock focus, but you can also have the white balance locked based on whatever the scene is. So it doesn't change regularly. Once you hit record, it should start and stay where it is originally. So if I hit record, the white balance should not change as maybe you bring a screen into the display. That's something that makes recording video, maybe on a phone much easier. Within photos, you'll see today's wallpaper. As I zoom into it, we automatically have an option to crop it, tap crop, and it brings us into sort of the editing dialogue. Editing has also been updated here as well. So this makes it super simple to crop. You no longer have to hit edit on the photo itself. Just zoom into what you want, hit crop. You can reset it. You can have it auto crop in certain types of photos. And then of course, when you're done, hit done and it saves. So that's been updated as well as the overall editing dialogue has changed just a little bit. Now there's a new feature in accessibility, something I've been trying to get to work for a few days. If we go to accessibility and then we scroll down, we have personal voice. This should take your voice and allow you to type and have it sound just like you when it's speaking to someone else. This is to help with people speaking. And you'll see here, it says charge iPhone to generate voice. I've been charging this for days and that's where today's sponsor comes in anchor. This is the new anchor transformers, 733 power bank. This is not only just just a plug for your devices. It's also a 10,000 milliamp hour power bank, plug into it, plug into our phone. And hopefully that personalized voice will start eventually. So we'll turn it on. You'll see it's charging. This power bank is 
compact as far as the overall size with a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. Of course it can charge two USB-C and one USB-A devices, and it will also charge an iPhone 13 over two times or an iPad mini sixth gen more than once. You can keep all of your charging devices at home and use just this one as it's compact. If you're out for the evening or on a trip, I'll just carry this with me. Also, it has Anchor's exclusive multi-protect safety technology that provides complete protection for you and your devices, monitoring temperature and more. Also be sure to check out another one they have with transformers here, and that's actually the 735. So the Anchor 735 can power three devices at once or one at 65 watts to charge a MacBook or more. So be sure to check these out. I'll link them in the description below. Now CarPlay gets some updates that I didn't cover in the initial what's new video. So I have a CarPlay device here. We'll wait for it to connect. There we go. And if we go into our settings, we've got settings there, we've got wallpaper and there's some new iOS 17 based wallpaper. So we can set this wallpaper. And of course we had the previous ones as well, but we just have the new background if you want to use that. Also, when you're playing audio, the actual player bar is larger. So if we go into music, you'll see this bar, some of the overall dimensions of things have changed. It just looks a little bit cleaner and a little different. Also, we have the option to change alerts here so we can change the alerts altogether. Just listen to them, turn it off or listen to navigation within CarPlay. Siri will now allow you to find people that share information with you from find my, so let's try it out. Find Zach Zolo. And so that will give you more information about anyone sharing their location from find my with you within messages. We have an update here and now you've already seen the new app picker here or different switcher on the left. And if we go into this, we have a couple options that have changed. So if we press and hold, we can rearrange any of these. So if we want to move stickers around, or if we never use it, we can move it down to the bottom and you can rearrange those as you'd like. Also, if we go into audio, the interface has changed. So it looks a little bit different than it did with iOS 16. Not a huge change, but something that's a little bit different. Also, if we stop that, we could send it or just cancel it. Also emoji search now has a change to it. So if we go into emoji and maybe we put smiling face, we now have the done button in the bottom, right? It's a little change, but something I think a lot of people will appreciate. Also, in some instances, if you have it shared within find my under the person's name at the top, it will actually show their location. So it will give the general area, whether that's the city near me, Charlotte, or somewhere around the world. If we go into settings and then we go down to passwords, there's some changes here and under passwords, there's a new section for recently deleted. Now I just scrolled this down so you can't see my actual passwords, but if we go into recently deleted, you'll see, we now have the option. It says deleted passwords and pass keys are available here for 30 days. After that time, they will be permanently deleted. So we can either select them and hit recover. So we could select this, recover it or permanently delete it now or go into it and just tap recover. Also, some people are saying that if you go in here and maybe you modify the password, it will show the previous password for up to 72 hours. I actually haven't seen that yet, but some people have seen that where it will expire after 72 hours. If maybe you forgot the last password. So if we go back, recover it. And within that password, you'll see it says last modified today. You've got the password. You can copy it of course. And if we go into edit, it. I'm not able to see that option, but some are seeing that. So if you're seeing it, let me know in the comments below health gets an update as well. If we go over into the health app, there's a few new changes here where we have a gradient in the background. So it's a little bit different as far as the way it looks. If we switch to light mode, you can see it there. It changes as well. And then if we go into browse, we go to medications and then we scroll down. You'll see that we have some options. Under options, we now have an option for follow-up reminders. So it says health can send follow-up reminders. If you haven't logged a medication 30 minutes after the initial notification. So if you want that enabled, you can, if maybe you forget a medication regularly, additionally, under this menu, there's a new option here as well. So if we go in here and search for physical effort, you'll see it here. So that's one of the new features. We have physical effort that they've mentioned where it will measure that with different information within the home app. If we go into home and maybe we find a light that we regularly use. So we'll go in to this light here. 
So we'll just tap on it and we have a new color picker option. So this is something we've had before, but the overall sort of look of it has changed. We have temperature, we have swatch, and we can go through and just select whatever color we'd like the light to be. Of course, you'll need a light that can change color like that, but you have that option for light strips and more now. Now there's some changes as well for phone. Now, some of you have seen this already. So if we go into phone and within the overall call, it looks a little bit different. The font has changed. If we go into keypad, there's some nice animations. Everything just looks a little bit better. We can mute or unmute and it has a much nicer design overall. Also, if we go into voicemail and let me just block the regular recent calls below as this is my actual phone, but you'll see here under recents, there's a new voicemail dialogue. We can tap on it to go directly to voicemail and we can see our transcribed voice message when it's completed. Also, people have said that recents allows for more calls than it did before to stay there. Now spotlight search has some new animations. It's just smoother overall. The keyboard is nice and smooth. And if we search for an app, maybe we'll search for Twitter here. It should show suggestions and much more. Now, if we go into the app store and maybe we want to download a new app, maybe we'll just scroll down here and let's select the game of the day. We'll hit get, it will now tell you how long it takes until it's actually downloaded and installed. So now it says one minute remaining and it's counting down the seconds until the app is installed. So that's a nice little update based on your overall internet connection and the size of the app and more. If we go into the stocks app within stocks, we now have a new sort option. So within stocks, we can change this to percentage change and sort by that to see over time, how much the percentage has changed. So if we go in and see it here, we can see percentage changes as well, and just more information in general across all of stocks. If we go into Safari, we have a great new option here, and this is a bit of sad news for Apollo, the Reddit app, which is shutting down. If we tap the menu button here, we have the option to listen to the page. If we tap on this, we can listen to it, just an audio version. It's shutting down. Apollo 4 Reddit is shutting down. So you can hear that and then tap pause listening and it will stop. It's a great option to have now. Now, if we go into our history, you'll see our history here, pretty familiar. We can search it, but we also now have favicons here. So from each website, we actually have the logo. And then also when we clear the history, we have a new dialogue that pops up. So this new screen, of course, allows us to clear a different time frame, clear the for a profile. Now that we have profiles, close all tabs or just clear history altogether. So it's a nice updated refreshed UI for that. Also, there's a new option. If maybe you're having a problem displaying a page, if we go to Apple, maybe there's an issue where the page isn't loading properly. If you reload the page and it's not working, you could get a dialogue at the top that suggests turning off private relay, which may help the issue overall. So if you have private relay creating an issue for you, it could resolve that. Now, if we go into maps, there's an update as well. And if we search for an individual, it actually gives their location, shows them on a map and has sort of a new dialogue here with find my contacts and more. So if we tap on more, you'll see we have the option to call, add to guides, add to favorites or report an issue. That's been updated in maps. There's also new settings options within maps. If we tap on our profile here, we have some new settings. There's now an option for offline maps, which allows us to configure this as it's a new feature in iOS 17. We can change the download to download over Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi and cellular automatic updates, optimized storage, or only use offline maps if you want to do that. So those are some new options. I downloaded generally the Charlotte area in general, so I can download where I'm at now or download a new map altogether. If we go into reminders and maybe we've created a new reminder for this one in particular, make an iOS 17 video. If we go into this one, tap on the I here for different options. We now have a new option for early reminder. We can change this from none to five minutes before 15 minutes before all the way up to one month before or customize it all together. If we go into messages and then tap the plus button and maybe we want to send someone cash. If we want to send them recurring payments, we can do that now by tapping on show keyboard and then we can set up recurring payments every day or you'll see here once a week every other week. So that's something you can set up now and you can set when it starts, add a memo to it and more. So we could set up payments regularly to someone just using Apple pay cash. Now in settings, there's quite a few changes as well. If we go into settings, we'll go back. The first small change in settings has to do with display and brightness. You'll see here with display and brightness, I have iOS 16.5 on the left, iOS 17 on the right display and brightness has an all new icon. 
It's not a huge change, but just something I wanted to mention. Also, if we go into privacy and security, there's an update. So if we go down to privacy and security, scroll down all the way to the bottom, we now have a sensitive content warning option. This is something that's turned off by default, but you can turn it on or off and it will actually detect photos and videos before they're viewed. If maybe they have something explicit in them and actually sort of blur them out and allow you just to tap on them to show it. This is something you may want on your child's phone or not. It's done all directly on the phone. The information is not sent elsewhere and you can enable this for airdrop messages or video messages. And then of course you have your analytics and improvements you can send to apps. I leave that off and if I see sensitive content, it will actually blur that and then I can view it if I want to. So that's a new option in settings. Now also if I bring in another phone again with 16.5, if we go into our settings, go into general, scroll down, we have the option for VPN and device management. There's a new icon there as well. It's more of a globe with a line under it. So something a little different, not a huge change, but something I thought I'd mention. Also, if we go into storage, there's some changes. So again, general iPhone storage, the overall look is a little bit different. We'll wait for it to load here on both of them. Give it a second. And we now have a sort option for all of the different apps. So we can sort by size, name, or last used date. So that's something that's new here as well. If you're using volume on the device and maybe you want to just bring your finger over here and scroll up and down, there's sort of a bouncy effect to it now. So you'll see it sort of bounces up and down where it didn't before it bounces and stretches and you can just change it with your finger there for volume. It's just a nice new animation that they've added. There is a lot of other changes I'll cover in some more videos. As I find more, it seems like there's a lot of little sort of nice changes throughout iOS 17. So hopefully stability is the focus overall. Let me know what your favorite change is in iOS 17 in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>